welcome to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. I'm your host, Shannon Abels. And whether you're listening on your commute, exercising, working in the garden, or sitting down with a hot cup of tea or a cafe au lait, thank you for tuning in. Let's get started. Welcome to the 174th episode of The Simple Sophisticate, and welcome to the fourth season of our podcast. I still can't quite believe that we're kicking off our fourth year with this podcast already. When we began, I can remember um, I took months to prepare to bring the podcast to listeners and I was nervous and I didn't know how I would do the audio. I'm not a tech audio person. It's I just write and well, through everything, through the learning process, we have arrived here and it is my hope that the quality continues to improve and I just want to thank you for continuing to listen and share your interest and share your curiosity because ultimately it is your emails and your comments that have nudged me to create various episodes that we've had. For example, this past June, we did our first Ask Shannon episode. That was the most downloaded episode of all time. And I also have been getting recommendations on what kind of guests you guys want on this podcast. Initially, I began with a few guests and that's it was scary and it was tough. And how am I going to make sure that they sound great and I can hear them and they can hear me? And how are we going to coordinate when they're in another country? Well, we've since done about 15 interviews. Doesn't seem like a lot, but for me, I'm thinking... Yes, let's keep doing that. And in fact, I already have one interview lined up for this coming season that I cannot wait to share with you guys. You guys are going to love her, especially those of you that love the Francophile topics. But I'm not going to get into that too soon because that's a few months away. Anyway, I just want to say thank you for tuning in and for continuing to be interested in living your unique and one and only Simply Luxurious life because it is through living intelligently that you can craft your unique one and only life that suits you and suits your passions and your creativity and the values that you hold dear. But we have an episode to get to and I want to talk today about the benefits of of bringing quality into your life and making decisions that favor quality. As well, this week's Petit Plaisir is a movie you're not going to want to miss. In fact, I'm going to go back and watch it a few more times. It's that good. So stay tuned to hear more about what that film is, is and why I loved it so much. With that, let's get into our first episode of season four. At the age of 11, now U.S. Tennis Open champion Sloane Stevens' mom was told by one of the directors at the tennis academy she was attending at that time, quote, she'd be lucky if she was a Division II player and got a scholarship. She didn't believe them. Her mom didn't believe them. And now she is only the third woman, which includes the Williams sisters, to win the U.S. Open in the past 15 years. Attaining quality, achieving quality isn't easy and it isn't given out for free. But when we choose to consciously select quality, the experience, the journey, and then the outcomes rise in their awesomeness. I've been thinking a lot about quality over the past few weeks and after years of curating a life built on a foundation of quality, habituating my routines that bring much joy and fulfillment, it has become easier to discern when non-quality events, people, items, etc. cross my path. It's akin to, I was trying to think of an everyday analogy, and the one that I thought of that made more sense to me was, for example, when you've been eating really well, you've been eating a whole food, you've been eating seasonal produce, not a lot of grease, not a lot of processed, 
not a lot of refined sugar. You've just been eating very well. Not it doesn't have to be uber clean. It's not like you're on a cleanse, but you've just been eating good food. This actually happened to me this summer. So I've been eating really, trying to be eating really well and in moderation. I mean, I have my cheese. I have my glass of wine here and there. I have my sauces, but I've been trying to eat very seasonally and experiment with recipes. And when you've been doing that for even just a month or so, And then you introduce something to your body that isn't going to treat it well, isn't what it wants. Maybe it's a very greasy, fried, I don't know, pick a summer fair item. They they fry everything, right? Say you had one of those. Your body responds very negatively. And it's something you recognize immediately. You feel different immediately and not in a good way. And what I've found is by curating this life that focuses on quality. It's not about letting go of a balance because there are times when, you know, it's it's okay to welcome a bit of quantity, but it's usually something that's very temporary. I'm talking about those those ingredients that build your foundation, the people, the thoughts, the actions, the events, the goals, and the food. And we're going to talk about food today since that example was just mentioned. When you've built a life on quality, your foundation is pretty strong and you're enjoying that life on an everyday basis. And then when something crosses your path that doesn't synchronize with a life of quality, it's not aligned with that, you are better tuned in to recognize it immediately. It will stick out so blatantly. Sometimes it's unconscious. You don't know why something, you know, uh, pings your intuition, but a red flag may go up. And then when you start thinking about it, you start realizing, oh, that's why. That's why it doesn't, it doesn't align with what I value. It doesn't align with deepening the quality that I, of life that I'm trying to build. And so as I've been creating that, I know many of you are building this kind of life as well, which is probably why you're tuning into this episode or to this, this podcast, is that there are benefits that we also become habituated to. And so when we go off of that path of choosing quality, the quality of our life, our everyday life goes down and we miss the quality of life that we had curated for ourselves. And we are quicker to want to get back on that right path. And I think that's a very good sign. I think, in fact, those moments need to happen for us to appreciate the life we've created. Here's a quote by Booker T. Washington about people of quality that we bring into our lives. Associate yourself with people of good quality, for it is better to be alone than in bad company. This is significant. I know that many of you have emailed me about this with your personal experiences, and I know this from my own experience, that because we've created a life that we love, we enjoy our own company. And when we have that inopportune situation of someone who doesn't elevate it, doesn't appreciate the quality way of life. Even if there's a little different, the quality um, attitudes, the quality experiences, things that enrich our lives, deepen the experience, we notice that our enjoyment goes down, our joy goes down, and we don't want that. And because we know what it feels like to have that elevated life of quality, it's easier to step back and say no. The benefits are many when we choose to welcome quality into our lives in all arenas of our life. Such benefits can be as grand as achieving one of the highest pinnacles in the tennis profession as Sloan Stevens did just this past weekend, or they can be as simple as keeping all of our fingers intact. Let's take a look today at 12 benefits of seeking out and selecting quality in all aspects of our daily life. Number one, since I just mentioned it, I'll begin there. The one benefit I want to begin with is that all of our fingers stay intact. (laughs) And it may sound silly, but not really. I have a feeling if any of you are active in the kitchen, it only takes the use of one unsharpened or poor quality knife to appreciate a top-notch slicing and dicing tool. As I shared in a post a few weeks ago during our French week, the 15 kitchen tools to cook anything like a pro, a sharp top quality knife in your kitchen or in your use wherever you are is a must. Do not skimp and save on a knife for the sake of having a knife in your kitchen. 
your fingers truly will thank you. I speak from experience, not that I've lost a finger, but I have sliced my finger a few times and and I'm not going to go into details there, but suffice it to say, having used quality knives and then when I happen to not have my knife with me when I travel, I do get a little timid in the kitchen and it's not as fun anymore. It's not as therapeutic anymore because I'm more worried about keeping my fingers intact. So ease your mind as well as save your fingers. Cooking is a wonderful experience. And if you can quickly and easily slice through that tomato or those vegetables or that meat while you're cooking, oh, it's just such a pleasure. It's such a pleasure. So not only are you keeping your fingers safe, but you're in you're heightening this amazing opportunity that some of us will enjoy more than others. Yes. But I think for me, I had an initial reaction when I was a young kid that I didn't really enjoy cooking. It was hard. The knife wouldn't work. The food was hard to cut. Well, it's because I wasn't using quality knives. When I first held and used a quality knife, oh my gosh, it was like slicing butter. And time was swift. I could get so many things done and it was so much more enjoyable. So the first benefit of choosing quality is that all fingers remain intact and you have a more enjoyable experience in the kitchen. Number two, priceless time is saved. As I somewhat mentioned in number one, time speeds up in the kitchen when you can quickly slice and dice things. But there are so many other things. If you pay for quality, you can save yourself time that doesn't have to be needlessly wasted. Here's a simple case in point. I give myself my own pedicure every couple of weeks and using the nail polish remover from a quality brand, the polish is immediately removed, takes maybe one to two minutes, gone. Having, while traveling, used a generic brand of polish remover, the time it took to remove the polish was absurdly long. I kid you not, 10, 15 minutes. And I know that sounds silly, but I'll get to that in a second. As I flipped over the container to see what the ingredients were in this product, I discovered that the ingredient at the top of the list was water. Well, no wonder it was taking me so long. I just used a product that was doing nearly the job that running my toenails under water would do. Nothing. My experience in this instance is absolutely trivial, but I use it because so many times when we make purchases, we think we're saving money and buying a similar product because it's a generic brand in the grocery store. But in the long run, some of these products waste our time and the effectiveness is completely ruined. And in this case, your nails may get extra wear and tear that they just don't need. Now, Not all generic products are like this. So it's important to flip over the container, the bottle, the box, whatever it is, and look and see if the ingredients are the same or nearly similar to the product you would have bought for a little bit more money. That's important. So in this case, it would save time, but just always make sure you're looking at something for the experience you're purchasing and the and the the work you want it to do is it going to do what you want to get done simply saving money is not worth it here's a quote that i really think is something worth considering because if we keep purchasing these inferior products they'll keep producing them and it's important to be a savvy shopper yes it's always good to stay within our budget but only if the things that we buy do what we want them to do here's the quote from john ruskin There is scarcely anything in the world that some man cannot make a little worse and sell a little more cheaply. The person who buys on price alone is this man's lawful prey. So number two is priceless time is saved when you choose quality. Number three, unnecessary stress is avoided. When we choose quality products for safety supplies, the vehicles we drive, the homes we live in, the neighborhoods we call home, the flight itineraries we travel, the stress decreases. While it may not entirely go away, and while we need to make the best choices for the details of which we do have control, we put much more in our favor by choosing well and not skimping merely to save a dollar. So number three is unnecessary stress is avoided. Number four, a deeper, more restful sleep is experienced. When we do what is best, when we refrain from doing what is merely easy, we give ourselves the ability to sleep more deeply. When our minds are not wrestling with unnecessary stress and worry, we sleep again more deeply. So it really is this idea of making sound choices that aren't just temporary fixes or things that are just easy. Sometimes the difficult decisions are the ones that need to be made, but we 
when we do that, when we are well with ourselves and our conscience, then we can sleep better. As well, when we don't worry unnecessarily, we also can sleep well. So number four is the benefit, a deeper, more restful sleep. Five, experience the vast wonders of the world more deeply. When we seek out experiences of substance, people of substance and tools and knowledge to help us better understand beyond the surface level what is going on in the world, what went on in the world, and what could go on in the world, we give ourselves the gift of deeper, more fulfilling experiences, memories, and opportunities for self-growth and self-reflection. So number five is experience the vast wonders of the world more deeply. Number six, reach your full potential. We can settle for what is working okay, what is livable, what is just fine. But if we have a deep passion for something, if we can see something others cannot when it comes to possibilities, a quality of life that is possible requires us to not simply be satisfied with what others say is our limitation. We are actually the only limitation that stands in our way. And often when others tell us to stop or that we can't go any further, We use it as an excuse to stop when really that's their perspective. We blame someone else for stopping us from achieving what we once thought we could because we're not so sure ourselves or we aren't as passionate as we say we are. I want you to remember Sloane Stevens and her mother. And if you believe you can do more, if you, you, you want to do more, if you have a deep desire and passion Ignore the limitation setters and keep on striving forward in order to see with your own eyes what you truly can become and achieve. And so that's another benefit of seeking and choosing quality. You can reach your full potential. Number seven, deepen your trust in mankind. It has been my experience that when I bring into my life quality individuals, my trust in humanity deepens. I begin to see the amazing people that live and breathe in this world along with me and realize we are all, should we choose to, full of love, dreams, and goodness. It can seem simpler to choose to be cynical, protective, and isolated after having experienced negative situations, but not all people wish to hurt. In fact, even those who have hurt are not bad people oftentimes. As Maury Schwartz of Tuesdays with Maury reminds, hurt people hurt people. Understanding this truth doesn't mean you should stay or surround yourself with hurt people who hurt you, but hopefully it will give you some understanding that it isn't about you and you need to walk away and surround yourself with one or two or three of the many amazingly loving, kind, and trustworthy people that reside in our grand old world, thus improving the quality of your life. So number seven is deepen your trust in humanity. Number eight, the odds begin to lean in your favor. Similarly, when you choose to seek out quality and let go of the contrary, windows and then gradually doors begin to open in your favor. What you seek, you find, often in ways you never could have planned. But if you believe there is good, if you trust that goodness abounds, you will find it, just as those who believe that people are not good and the world cannot be trusted will find what they're looking for as well. But this is important. So long as we have more people seeking the former, the good, the goodness, that goodness grows. So I encourage you to seek out goodness, be goodness, and select a quality way of living, modeling for others that such a way of life is indeed possible. So number eight, the benefit of choosing quality is the odds begin to lean in your favor. Number nine, optimal health is achieved. From the quality food we select, eating what is in season, reducing or eliminating processed foods, treating our bodies well, we amp up the healthy quotient in our lives and deepen the experiences we can have indoors, outdoors, and everywhere in between. Here's a quote from Alice Waters. We eat every day. 
And if we do it in a way that doesn't recognize value, it's contributing to the destruction of our culture and of agriculture. And if it's done with a focus and care, it can be a wonderful thing. It changes the quality of your life. So not only does eating quality food and living a quality, healthy life help you, it can help your world as well. Number 10, speaking of the world around you, you can elevate others around you when you choose quality. This is related to number eight, in which we talked about how you can stack the odds in your favor. When we model living a life of quality, letting go of the negativity, the hurtful ideologies, the isolationist mentality and naysayers, we reveal to those around us that choosing such a way of life, a life of optimism, hope, love, and strength, is indeed the means to living a more contented life. Sight is stronger than words. Modeling is stronger than telling. And when we have the courage to say no to what no longer feeds us, loves us, nurtures us, and step down a new path that we may not know very well or know how to travel, but that feels more accepting, more loving, and more authentic and human, we will begin to see ourselves rise, our moods improve, our health improve, and thus the quality of our lives improve. That is inspiring to anyone paying attention, and that is what it takes to elevate those around you. That's number 10. Number 11, your mind becomes available to be creative, loving, and more problem-solving. When we no longer are consumed with unnecessary worry if what we've paid for or invested in works or if the people we've chosen to welcome into our lives are trustworthy, we have a mind that is free to explore exciting new avenues. From being creative to problem solving what may have seemed impossible to coming up with fun ways to spend time with our loved ones. Our minds are in need of constant fuel to be energized. Why drain it with what it doesn't need to process? Here's another quote, and this one is from Pearl Zhu. The quality of your life is a function of the quality of the thinking you have done. And the last benefit I want to talk to you about when we choose quality is that we elevate the world we all live in. Taking in the past 11 benefits we just talked about. As our lives rise, because our everydays become healthy, inspiring, and pointed in a direction that enables us to reach our full potential, those around us rise as well. And ultimately, it can be a domino effect. None of us we'll probably ever know all of the people we can influence with our actions. Why not, though, make the influence that you do have a positive one, one of selecting quality thoughts, behaviors, and people. Because when we reward what we desire and long for, we will begin to see more of it. However, if we spend more time dwelling on what we do not want, we actually give that entity, that thing we do not want to exist, more bandwidth than it deserves, and we give it life. Here's a quote to ponder from Charles Ames. Eventually, everything connects. People, ideas, objects. The quality of the connections is the key to quality, per se. So make the connections that you are building ones of quality. Instead of dreading how long your life will be and and trying to just make sure that you can maintain a, a mediocre existence, but making it as long as you want, so therefore the quantity, why not focus on making sure that every day is one full of quality? Focus on the quality of each life. Elevate it. For it is, quote, the quality of life that is more important than life itself. Alexis Carroll certainly has a point with that quote. If we are living, but not well, just enduring or protecting and hoping we don't get hurt, worrying about what might happen and thus not being present, appreciating all that is well, such a life is not much fun to live. And the catch really is if someone has only known the latter life, so that life of worry, of of making sure nothing bad happens, focusing on making sure nothing bad happens rather than trying to build the positive and bring it in the positive, they may have a hard time trusting that what we talked about in this episode is possible. Maybe they've never experienced an elevated quality of life, so they don't trust it and they stay safe in their mediocre living. But it is possible. You and I know it's possible. It's most absolutely possible. 
And when they see someone model that fact, that is when they may just begin to make the positive changes of living a life of quality. Why not be the model they've been looking for? The model the world has been looking for and the model you need in your life today as you move forward each and every day. Choosing a life of quality or quantity, it has to be a conscious choice. It's not something that, unless it's becoming habituated, which it will, once you keep practicing these choices, it can and will become habituated as we talked about at the top of the episode. But initially, it does have to be a conscious choice. So, so look around you. You know, look around your days, look around your weeks and see what is fueling you in a positive way. And then look and see what's draining you. And, you know, there's things that we will have to deal with. And then we do then need to move forward. But sometimes there's things that we can't fix. We can't make better. If it's a drain and you can't fix it and it's not going to improve, unfortunately, sometimes you have to move on. But this is the thing. We have choices. And so long as we in those instances where we have choices, are making choices that are of quality, all 12 of these benefits can begin to materialize. And that's the good thing. That's the good news. So I've also included three previous archived posts and episodes on the topic of quality with regards to consumption and what's worth paying a high price for. And the initial post that began this episode a couple of years ago, I created it. I, inc- I included that link as well. So take a look at the show notes, the simply luxurious life.com backslash podcast 174 and uh, contemplate continuing to deepen your life of quality rather than a life of quantity. All right. I'll be right back with this week's petit plaisir. <music> Welcome back. Over this past weekend, as I mentioned on last Friday's This and That, I went and saw Haley Myers Shire's new movie called Home Again. And you may kind of recognize that last name, Myers, because she is the daughter of the well-known director, writer, and producer, Nancy Myers, who created the film so many of us love and watch again and again and again. It's complicated. Something's got to give the holiday, all the way back to the 80s with Baby Boom and Diane Keaton. Loved that movie. Love that movie, I should say. And this film is very much in line with a Nancy Myers classic film. It's called Home Again, and it stars Reese Witherspoon, who has just turned 40, and she has returned from New York to live in Los Angeles. It is a journey of the self This is, while it is a rom-com, it is a journey of Reese and her character, Alice Witherspoon. And she is newly separated from her husband. She has two young daughters and she is an interior decorator, which is perfect for the set, this beautiful Spanish home that is located in Brentwood, California, that was built in 1929. This set had to have a house that also had a guest house because if you've seen the trailer, which I'll put that on the show notes, there are three young gentlemen who end up living with her in, they actually inhabit the guest house that is on the property. So they needed a set that had a beautiful home, which Nancy Myers movies always seem to have beautiful homes and lovely, thoughtful uh, decor. And this one definitely fit the bill. In fact, I'll include a link to a post by a blogger that I highly regard in the decor sphere, uh, who details the entire house and the real estate of it. And what it just all the remodeling. In fact, while I was reading the post, I learned that this used to be Cindy Crawford's house. This is actually where she gave birth to both her children um, with Randy Gerber. And so it, it was featured in an El Decor issue back in 2002. It's a lovely home and it is definitely a character in the film in many ways. Also in the film is Candace Bergen who plays Reese Witherspoon's mother and she is a delight, has a few quick quips that just get you chuckling and it's just fun to to have her on the set two great actresses and then Michael Sheen plays Reese's estranged husband but what I loved about this film beyond what I just shared there number one is the ending which I will not give away but I will say that I love the ending and it's 
has a lot to do with, if you've listened to the podcast in which I talked about Nancy's last film, The Intern with Anne Hathaway, I did not like that ending. And I expressed why in that episode, and I'll provide a link to it on the show notes. Haley wrote the script. She's 29 years old. She wrote the script. She directed. Her mom produced the film and was on set. But she wrote it. And I feel like it's a more contemporary and much needed ending. Because this movie, again, it's not about a relationship with another. It's about a relationship with oneself. And enjoying and appreciating the everyday that we create for ourselves and the quality of people we bring into our lives. This is the other reason I liked it. It deals and addresses boundary setting and the importance of boundary setting and how even though you have boundaries, you can still sit back and engage with life and not try to control it and let it just unfold as it will, as it potentially could welcome some amazing and exciting new people into your life as this film demonstrates. But with that, let me play the trailer so you can at least get an idea of the tone and the storyline. Here it goes. Hi. How are we feeling? First day, new school, are you nervous? I'm feeling exhausted, hopeless, and I don't enjoy the things that I once loved. Where are you getting this from? The Zolash commercial, obviously. There's this really sweet guy in my yoga class. I've only been separated for five months. Girls, it's my birthday. Let's okay. have fun. Hi. So I'd like to offer to buy you drinks. Really? Yes. The manager is making me ask for your ID. Okay. <laughs> By the way, I'm definitely old enough to drink alcohol. <laughs> me too. Obviously. I just always act out on my birthday. It's like my own personal New Year's Eve. Well, I just go like, what? And I just reel it back to normal. Did you watch these? I did, but um, only because I was doing a load and I've been up since 5.30. Hurry up, you guys. What are you guys doing home? I thought Nana was taking you to school. You're acting weird. Oh, my God. Thank you very much for everything, Mrs. Um, and you are? I like them. Namaste, I'm Teddy. But they're dead, Brooke. So I thought they could stay here. Stay here? Try looking at this as something that could be sort of exciting. Okay, guys, let's just do our best not to cramp each other's style. Perfect. <laughs> uh, I'm just gonna grab that and flush down the toilet. I don't know your ex, but he must be some kind of maniac to have let you slip through his hands. You know I'm 40, right? Uh, yeah, I knew that. Like, Bolivar. Oh my god, tell me you see him too. What are you doing here? Oh god, I just can't think straight. Is that one of them? Did you tell dad about your play? Will he stay for it, daddy? When is it again? Next Next Friday. Friday. I miss our family. Let's fix this. You make a decision about your life when you're 25 years old. You think, is that like a good life decision for the rest of your life? You seem to be handling everything really well. Okay, let's eat. It's gonna be good. Bye. Good night. The movie is Home Again, starring Reese Witherspoon, written and directed by Haley Myers Shire, who is the daughter of Nancy Myers. She, Nancy Myers, is the producer of the film. And if you love Nancy Myers films, you will love this film as well. I have a great feeling about that. I hope you've enjoyed this week's Petit Plaisir, where each week ideas are shared to make the everyday all the more enjoyable. Tune in at the end of each Monday's podcast where I'll recommend a book, a film, or a recipe. Anything that is a simple pleasure to satiate your sophisticated taste. Now, before we wrap up today, I want to say thank you to a listener who left a review about the podcast. It's from The Daily Croissant. They wrote... I absolutely love listening to my weekly dose of the Simple Sophisticate. When life is overwhelming and I need a little escape, the Simple Sophisticate is my petite 
plaisir. Shannon is so authentic, and I love her delivery. She reminds me to always enjoy the simple pleasures in life, from style to food, and helps me to be more mindful as well. Merci beaucoup, Shannon. Keep up the great work. I want to say merci beaucoup to you for leaving a review and the reasons you love this podcast. If you as well love this podcast, we would so appreciate you leaving a review, even if it's just the stars review. Thank you for listening today. I hope you have a beautiful start to this season. Thank you for tuning in to the Simple Sophisticated Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. For more ideas and inspiration throughout the week, stop by the blog, thesimplyluxuriouslife.com, or pick up the book, now available on Audible, iTunes, and Amazon, as well as in paperback, Choosing the Simply Luxurious Life, a Modern Woman's Guide. To stay caught up on the most recent episodes of the podcast, blog posts, and to receive exclusive news as well as an extra dose of inspiration to start your weekend, subscribe to the Simply Luxurious Life's weekly newsletter, which arrives in your inbox each Friday morning to enjoy the hot cup of tea or a hot cup of coffee. Thank you for listening. I'm your host, Shannon Abels. A la prochaine.